This is K.M. Wyland, and you're listening to the 455th episode of the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast. I've been working on edits to publish the first draft of my Portal Fantasy sequel Dreambreaker since last July, a period that was extended because I moved in the middle of it. But in no small part due to that extension, I'm extra excited to have finished the edits on that book for now, which means I get to move on to outlining the next book. As you may remember, my Portal Fantasy Dreamlander, which I published quite a few years back, was originally intended as a standalone, until, surprise, a few years back, new inspiration hit that would turn that single book into a trilogy. I've yet to name the third book, it'll be Dream Something-er, but I'm incredibly happy to be sitting down to work on it, and to finish my adventure with this story. I have a lot of questions to answer for myself after where I left the story in the second book, but as you've probably heard me mention once or twice, the outlining part of the process is by far my favorite, so I'm just reveling in being back in this place where pure inspiration meets with fun puzzles and problem solving. So, wish me luck. And now I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast, my nine writing goals for the new year. Last year, I wrote about how I don't really like writing goals. Mostly this is because they focus on the results and too often bypass the importance of the journey. But this January, perhaps more than any other January, I find myself brimming with intentional and actionable ideas about where I want this year to take me as both a writer and a person. This post is a little late, scraping into the official goal-setting month by a bare week, since most of my January so far has been taken up with recovering from Christmas, literally, and launching my latest novel, Wayfair. But I've also been doing a lot of thinking and processing. I feel like last year was the close of a significant chapter in my life, culminating with a move to be nearer my sister and her growing family. And as I look out on this brand new chapter, I find there is so much I want to do. Because my writing ultimately influences or is influenced by everything else in my life, it's hard for me to separate writing goals from life goals. They all blur together. So I thought I'd share my top nine goals slash intentions for this year with a specific focus on how they will impact my journey as a writer. Although these goals are obviously very specific to me and my current chapter in life, I'm sharing them today because I think all of them are potential value adders for any writer at any time. If nothing else, I hope you find them interesting. Goal number one, find the balance between art and business. More than any other question in my writing life, this remains the big one, always looming, never quite finding an answer. I've talked before about reframing marketing and business mindsets into a more giving or sharing focused approach which is something I continue to work on. However, in reality, many of these same challenges still remain. As is true for, I think, the vast majority of full-time authors, I make my living less off my writing, that is my art, and more off my writing business. As such, the business naturally likes to try to suck up my attention and energy. You gotta eat, after all, right? For me, part of the problem is that I'm such a crazy all or nothing person. If I'm focusing on the business, it's hard to keep that from being all I'm focusing on and vice versa. When I'm writing, I don't want to think about scheduling social media messages or reminding a partner company that I really need an invoice now. Even after 11 years of juggling the art of writing fiction with the business of teaching writing, I find I don't yet have what I would call an intentional solution to this challenge, but it remains my top goal. The past few years have already helped me make huge strides just in realizing how out of whack my focus was getting in favoring the business side. But I'm still doing my best, largely via the goals I'm going to talk about in a minute, to find an optimal balance that helps me enjoy every minute of both my work and my art. Goal number two, hack my brain for the hard stuff. There are parts of writing and the writing business that come naturally to me. There are other parts I've mastered through dedication and learning. And then there are the parts that make me feel like a five-year-old kicking and screaming and howling at the thought of getting her picture taken with the creepy clown. 
it's not stuff that's easy, not intuitive, not interesting, and not fun. And I don't wanna. But the more I learn about how my brain and my personality work, the better I'm getting at reframing my approach to the hard stuff. I talked last week about how you can hack your brain to create a writing process that lets your natural strengths carry the bulk of the hardest parts. I've gotten pretty good at that with my writing, but on the business side, I'm wanting to be more intentional about how I approach the stuff I really don't like and am therefore much more likely to procrastinate on. For example, I hate ads. I just hate them. The whole researching keywords and A-B testing and analyzing which approach is actually working, totally not my thing. Every part of my brain rebels. For 11 years, I've pretty much avoided having to deal with them. But as Amazon now shifts into a pay-to-play model where advertising seems to be becoming a necessity, I find myself reluctantly moving into this dreaded playground. My advantage is that I know how my brain works. I know my weaknesses, including studying, analyzing, and integrating technical information on the spot. And I know my strengths, which include holistically absorbing information and implementing organized plans of attack. This realization takes off a lot of the pressure, reframes the problem into a shape I can take a bite out of, and gives me a plan for moving forward. So I guess that means no more excuses for procrastination. Goal number three, trust myself more. This is primarily a life goal, but it has obvious implications in both my writing and my business. Something I realized this winter is that I constantly second guess myself in response to other people's opinions, only to more often than not circle back around months or even years later and realize I wasn't so wrong in the first place. Part of this is just how my brain works. I take in massive chunks of information, slowly observe patterns as they emerge, and then sort and resort conclusions into appropriate boxes. But part of it I'm realizing is just me undervaluing my own observations and understanding. In many instances, the odds aren't any greater that someone else is right in their presentation of themselves, in their worldview, in their knowledge of a specific subject than you are. If you're going to trust one person over the other, why shouldn't you just trust yourself? Now, granted, there's a fine line here between confidence and hubris, but as long as that line is always being rigorously examined with a continuous focus on refining the purity and honesty of emotional and logical judgments, I believe it's important for each of us to learn to trust our gut instincts. This is something I've long believed when it comes to writing. Each writer must find the balance between the humility necessary to learn and the confidence to stand on their own artistic understanding and vision. It's just as true in life. Goal number four, live and write greener. This year I've made a commitment to trying to make more sustainable life choices. I've cut out pretty much all single use products such as napkins, tissues, straws, grocery bags. I'm trying to choose non-plastic alternatives for household items. My dish brush is wooden, pot scrapers and dish drainer are bamboo, refillable shampoo and conditioner bottles are stainless steel, etc. I buy almost exclusively secondhand clothing, mostly through ThreadUp and garage sales. And I'm trying to grow more of my own food by a kitchen garden from Aggressively Organic, which we'll see how that goes since I have something of a black thumb. Although a minimal waste lifestyle sounds daunting at first glance, I can't believe how much fun I'm having with it. Seriously, not only is it way easier than I thought it would be, once you get the basics in place, it's no less work and little to no less expense than normal. And not only does it contribute to a beautiful home, Seriously, wood, glass, and stainless steel products create a much nicer aesthetic than do neon plastics. But it's also a delightful and genuinely enjoyable challenge to figure out new ways to live greener. My life is about 75% green hacked at this point, and I'm honestly a little bummed there are no longer any major changes I can work on. Now, this actually hasn't created too many changes in my writing life since I was already pretty green there. 
I'm gonna do a post and maybe even a video on the specifics of this sometime this year, including such things as printing manuscripts less, buying more eBooks instead of print, switching to a fountain pen, switching to a stapleless stapler, switching to highlighter pencils, etc. Goal number five, make time to rest, listen, think. January is always a bit of a funk month for me. It's hard for my productivity oriented personality to be okay with this, but beyond just recognizing the inevitability of the hibernation pattern, I'm also trying to focus more on the importance of intentional downtime. The other night I was whining on the phone to my mom about how lazy I feel because ever since Christmas, it seems like it's taking me longer and longer to get going in the mornings. She immediately turned on the mom voice and said, you're thinking and that's incredibly important for a writer. She's right. I never sit around doing nothing, but sometimes more often than I realize, I think I need to sit around and intensely process. This too is how my brain works. The more intentional I am at taking my gut instincts and observations and actively and logically talking myself through them, the more insightful and productive I ultimately am. Fortuitously, on uh, the same night my mom got after me, I also read Madeline Langle's similar reminder in Walking on Water. She said, sitting, or better, lying on one of my favorite sun-warmed rocks, I try to take time to let go, to listen, in much the same way that I listen when I am writing. In our go-go world, it can be so easy to feel guilty for taking the time to mentally rest, but I grow more and more adamant in my belief that stepping back from busyness is important, not least for personal health, but also for artistic inspiration. The well must be filled before the bucket can be lowered. Goal number six, read more consciously. I talked about this in my recent compilation of my favorite reads from last year. I don't read like I used to. To some extent, this was affected by other aspects of my life, but it's also just part of the continuing evolution of my mindset from being focused on productivity to being more focused on being present and enjoying the journey. This year, I find myself with a renewed excitement about reading in no small part because I've changed my reading schedule to prevent any one book from feeling formidable. I've started reading the quote unquote harder books just a little tiny bit at a time. I'm currently working through Emmy E. Werner's painful World War II account through the eyes of innocence. And instead of being ridiculously rigid in what I read when, I'm giving myself the freedom to focus on whatever reading feels most urgent and interesting at any given time. Occasionally I'll find a novel I just can't put down, but these days my page turners seem to be mostly nonfiction. My current goal is to try to read at least one book of history from every major country. But I still make sure to get my fiction fix with one chapter sometime during the day, usually right after lunch. Now, this undoubtedly sounds insane to most people, but the realization last summer that I didn't have to read my TBR pile in order was incredibly liberating. Now I read what I want when I want. It works much better. Don't laugh. Goal number seven, find and utilize the best times to write. Another area of my life in which I'm trying to be more receptively spontaneous and less rigidly scheduled is in my actual writing. I want to optimize every part of my day so I'm at my best for each task. Writing, of course, is always at the top of the to-do list. There are periods in my life when writing first thing in the morning is the best thing. I wake up excited by the thought that I get to start my day with writing. But other periods, usually in the winter, I do better when I get everything else out of the way first and then write in the waning twilight of the afternoon's last few hours. Again, for me, this is part of learning about being more aware of and receptive to myself. Instead of boxing myself into a schedule and demanding I keep it, I want to get better at listening to and understanding the ebbs and flows of my inner and outer life. And this is nowhere more important than in my art. Goal number eight, stretch my comfort zones in the real world. If you were to ask me to name one thing I don't feel I'm very good at, my immediate answer would be driving. 
blame it on being the absent-minded writer in her ivory tower stereotype, but all my insecurities come out when I have to drive in unfamiliar areas or circumstances. I'm actually not a bad driver, but I am a stressed out driver. So one of my main goals this year is to give myself more driving experience. Since I'm living in a new town, there are lots of opportunities for driving in unfamiliar areas. I've made it a commitment to drive someplace new at least once a week. So how does this tie in with writing? Not at all, or not directly at any rate. But writers must live, must have experiences, must push their comfort zones in order to better understand themselves and their lives. It's all grist for the mill. This is something I grow more aware of with every year. I spent so much of my 20s in front of a computer screen. I want my 30s to be spent stockpiling experiences and skills other than those inherent to being a writer. Goal number nine approach the page with wonder. I feel I have come so far as a writer. I have learned so much. I know how to write a novel now. The process doesn't scare me or frustrate me anymore. And that's wonderful. But as I began writing what will be my 12th novel, not all of them were published naturally, I am hyper aware that I don't ever want the glory of this journey to become dusty and wrote. I want every story I write to be an adventure full of mystery. I admit it, sometimes I have to remind myself to approach the page with wonder. And that is perhaps my most important goal this year. I want every minute I spend with my stories to be minutes that, underneath all the workmanship, are minutes founded in reverence and awe. At the end of the day, I am not a teacher of stories. The story is the teacher of me. And I want never to forget the magnificent humility of that. Now, I'm sure there are some more subconscious ideas and intentions also rattling around in my brain, but these nine goals are my top focus for this year, and I'm sure quite a few years to come. More specifically though, my goals also include finishing the outline for the third book in the Dreamlander trilogy, finishing second round edits on Dreambreaker after my alpha readers report back, and probably starting work on a new writing craft book about incorporating theme into story. I'm also toying with the idea of returning to a weekly video series, probably something like an informal question and answer format. I'd also like to see my fiction start migrating into audio editions and my podcast get settled on a better platform that will make it more easily accessible to non iTunes users as well. In short, I have big plans for this year. Unlike some past years, I think most of these are doable, mostly because they're focused primarily on intentional living rather than just on productivity. I hope this peek into my thoughts for the new year will give you some thoughts of your own for your own writing goals. Let's make this year our best year yet. And please stop by the blog and chime in because I would love to know what are your biggest writing goals for this year. If you'd like to be a part of the fabulous word player community over on my site and join in the conversation on this subject, be sure to stop by the website at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. You can always find a transcript of the most recent podcast and add your voice to the, dis to the discussion by visiting the first post on the site's homepage. And don't forget that if you're looking for an older post, you can always find those by putting the podcast title in the search field at the top of the right-hand column or sometimes that will be found at the very bottom of the page if you're on a smaller screen, such as a mobile device. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes. And if you'd like to support helping writers become authors, I would totally appreciate it if you consider taking the time to leave a quick rating or review on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening to the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast, and be sure to check back again next week.